Imagine we have an initially empty room. People start walking into the room, one at a time, until we have in people in the room. Now every person in the room also has a birthday. Call these birthdays B1 through BN. These birthdays are distributed throughout D days in the year. We're going to make two assumptions about our birthdays. First, they're uniformly distributed throughout the year. This means that for a normal Earth year, there's a 1 in 365 chance of a person having a birthday on a given day. Our second assumption is that birthdays are independent of one another. This means that there are no twins, triplets, or other anomalous population subsets within our population. The birthday paradox is stated as follows. Given n people in a room, we want to find the probability p of n that at least two of those people share a common birthday. Stated a bit differently, how many people have to walk into our room to assure a probability p of at least two people in the room sharing a birthday? Think for a second. Take a guess about how many people would have to walk into the room to assure a probability of 50% of a birthday match. solve the problem that I posed, let's solve a simpler problem first. How many people do we need to assure a 100% chance of a birthday match? For a year of 365 days, we need greater than or equal to 366 people to assure that at least two of the people share the same birthday. This is because 366 is greater than 365, the number of days in the year, so we're assured to get at least one match. This illustrates the pigeonhole principle. Now, for a lower probability of matching, 50%, like the problem posed, we need to think about this calculation in terms of the complementary event. We can express P of N as 1 minus the probability of no birthdays matching, where P bar of n, the complementary event, represents the probability that all of our birth, all n of our birthdays are distinct, that they are all different. We can think of the event that no people in the room share a common birthday as a sequence of n independent events, a product of n different probabilities for people as they enter the room. Let's consider the first person entering the room. There were no people before the first person, so the probability that the person doesn't share their birthday with anyone else in the room is 100%, 1, or 365 over 365. Now let's consider the second person. For the second person, there's already one person in the room, so the probability of them not sharing a birthday with anyone else in the room decreases to 364 over 365. Similarly, similarly for the third person, the probability decreases to 363 over 365. And for the last person in the room, the probability decreases to 365 minus the number of people before the last person in minus one people over 365. Now, this entire product can be expressed as 365 factorial over 365 to the nth power times 365 minus n factorial. The probability of a birthday match is just one minus this probability, one minus the complementary probability. We can write a general solution of the birthday paradox in terms of the number of days in the year D and the number of people in the room N. If we let the number of days in our year equal 365, then we can try different values of N until we get a probability just above 0.5. This value of N will then be the solution to our original problem. Trying different values of N, we find that n equals 23 is the solution. 
lower than you expected? We can visualize the birthday paradox in Mathematica along with several interesting variations. Shown here is a graph of the probability of a birthday match versus the number of people in the room. We can vary the number of people in the room to get a visualization for the probability of two people sharing the same birthday. We can see the probability converges to 100% fairly quickly. Now we can also change the number of days in the year. As we increase the number of days in the year from 100 to 1,000, the distribution as a whole lowers, indicating that it's that we need more people in the room to assure a higher probability of a match. This should make sense intuitively. Now let's have some fun with varying the year length. Plotted below is the birthday paradox for a year on Mercury of 88 days. Similarly, for Venus, we have a slightly different distribution. For Mars, an even lower distribution. For Jupiter, the distribution over this range switches concavity. And for Saturn, we see the same effect, same effect for Uranus. And finally, for Neptune, at over 250 times an Earth year, we have a very different looking plot with much, um, much lower probabilities for, for the numbers of people compared to Earth. Now we can change the upper limit of our people to see what this distribution looks like over a longer period of time. Now we're going to take a look at a variation on the original problem where we compute the probability of a birthday match within k days. So if you set k equal to zero, you see that we have the same equation as our original. Now we're going to increase k, the separation between the days. And we're going to see that the distribution is going to rise overall. Probability of a match is increasing for lower numbers of people in the room. We can play this forward. The birthday paradox for three people instead of two. The probability of w being greater than one of us having at least one match is going to be a summation of an expression of days and number of people, derived similarly to our original equation for two people. Information about derivation of this equation can be found in a paper linked at the end of this video. The probability of a match between three people, shown in blue, is much lower than the probability of a match for two people. Setting our year to that of a Martian year, 687 days, we can view our graph over a larger range by changing this from 100 to 500. We see that it takes much longer for the matching, for the probability of a match between three people to converge to 100% than it does for a match between two people to converge for 100%. We've examined the birthday paradox for two and three people and have looked at what happens to the distribution when we change the amount of days and also the separation between the birthdays to qualify for a match. Now what if we implemented a non-uniform birthday distribution? In the USA it was found that in one study that July through October were the most popular months for births. We could simulate the birthday paradox according to some non-uniform model. The paradox can be applied to the birthday attack. A, cryptograph a cryptographic attack used to read encrypted digital signatures. We can sign a message with a dig digital signature by computing a hash value f of m for the message and then signing it with a secret key. By making small insignificant changes to the original message, we can forge many fake copies of the message, call one of them m prime. We can then find a hash for we can find hashes for m prime until one matches the hash for m. After the fair version of the message is signed, we can attach it to the fake message, proving that someone signed the fake message. 